Stan Jibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. Whiskey One Good Vibrations at your service to talk about a three wire dipole antenna. Now, I made a video uh, just yesterday. Today is June 14th, 2014. So, I made that one on June 13th, 2014 in uh, my Ham Radio 3 playlist. A ham Radio Ham and Shortwave Radio 3 playlist, and this one should be right near that one. You can just look for the date, and, look, and uh, I recommend that you watch that one. It's called a folded dipole antenna. Well, a folded dipole antenna, for reasons explained in that video, has approximately a 300 ohm impedance at the feed point rather than the 73 to 75 ohms of a single wire dipole antenna because the two conductors split the current and uh, the resistance is inverse, inversely proportional to the square of the current. So <clears throat> that's all explained in that video. Well, it turns out that that kind of an antenna is a pretty good match for 300 ohm transmission line. Well, suppose now instead that you have three rather than two wires connected just like this. This is one half of a wavelength from end to end according to the formula length in feet equals 467 divided by the frequency in megahertz. So it's the same formula that you would use for a single wire dipole or a folded dipole antenna. But you have three wires here. Three wires shorted out at the ends and then the feed point is at the center of this arrangement in one of the three wires. It doesn't matter which one. I've just shown it on the bottom one here for convenience. They're about, um, they're spaced about six inches. You can, you'll have to fabricate this yourself. You'd probably use uh, spacers and make sort of a, sort of like a ladder line, except uh, a ladder with three vertical uh, <laughs> support. Well, they're not vertical now here, they're horizontal. But it's like a sort of a trumped up ladder line arrangement. You can use plastic spacers and fabricate this yourself and have a pretty good time doing it. I'd recommend you use something like AWG number 12 uh, solid copper wire, soft drawn copper preferably because you want these things to maintain a more or less even spacing about six inches between each of the three or 12 inches for the entire width of the thing. Then you're going to need a high impedance open wire feed line and there's a reason for that. Remember that the resistance, the feed point resistance of an antenna like this is going to be inversely proportional to the square of the current because as you remember the formula power equals current squared times resistance so resistance equals power divided by current squared. You divide the current up three ways here. So what you're getting with a constant power is you are going to end up with um, you are going to end up with uh, one third of the current in each one of these wires. So you square one third, you get one ninth. You divide by one ninth. It's the equivalent of multiplying by nine. So you're going to have nine times the um, resistance that you would have at the center of a single wire half-wave dipole, and it will be a purely resistive impedance. Let's just check this out. Let's look at our handy-dandy calculator and get a pretty exact figure here. 73 ohms for the resistance at the center of a single wire dipole times nine 657 ohms. Well, now how are you going to find a 657 ohm open wire transmission line? Well, you're going to have to build that yourself too. And I'd recommend you do it out of, say, number 12 AWG soft drawn copper wires with spacers similar to the way you'd make this, but only two wires. 
I'd recommend you space them about six inches apart. And when you do that, experience has shown that that'll be about a 600 ohm characteristic impedance. So it's a pretty good match to this long span of line. And it will be long. You'll want to use this type of an arrangement if you decide to use it. It would work very well on bands, particularly 7 megahertz. Well, let's see. I would recommend it would work very well on 1.8, 3.5, 7 and possibly also on 10 megahertz uh, so you want to make sure that your frequency is low enough that you can space these wires six inches apart and still have them be in the same point in space relative to a wavelength so that the uh, wire will not radiate if you make the frequency too high this uh, feed line will begin to radiate and pick up signals a little and that will adversely affect its efficiency. So the best bands I would recommend here, uh, well, 1.8, 3.5, and 7 megahertz ham bands, and also that little 5 megahertz band. I keep forgetting that that even exists, <clears throat> but it does. It's, not, it's a set of channels, not a band, really. You're going to need a transmatch to tune this thing. I don't know if they make 9 to 1 balance. Maybe they do. But you're going to probably want a transmatch here, and you should get one that will tune a truly balanced line in a truly balanced fashion. And as I've alluded to in other videos, uh, a very good transmatch for that uh, porpoise is made by a company called Palstar. You'll drop a pretty penny on this thing. I think it's about 700 bucks, but it's a 1500 watt capable transmatch designed for actual balanced loads and it has a balanced network in there and that's Im really important especially in uh, if you want to get everything you can out of your system suppose that your feed line is really really long like say a quarter of a mile because you want your antenna to be far far away from your station Say you live down in a valley and you want to put that antenna up on top of the hill and you have to run a line for a quarter of a mile. You fabricate all this stuff. Say you're running it on the 3.5 megahertz band, so it's about 66 feet from end to end, thereabouts, according to that formula uh, that I gave you for a half-wave dipole. So you get everything set up, and you're going to have a pretty good match, pretty close to a one-to-one -one SWR on this long span of extremely low loss open wire line. Then your transmatch can tune that 600 ohms. Most transmatches will handle that just fine, and the PAL star I'm sure will too, to your 50 ohm coaxial cable and then to your radio. Once you've done that, there's another bonus that this antenna has, a three-wire dipole like this. It has a much broader bandwidth than a conventional single-wire dipole, and in fact, even better than a folded dipole. So the, the SWR is going to be flat along this line, or nearly flat, over a much wider range of frequencies. You'll easily be able to cover the entire 3.5 megahertz band. You'd simply cut this wire for 3.75 megahertz right in the center of the 80 and 75 meter amateur band. Happy operating. I, uh, I wish I lived in a valley with a big hill so I could test it. No, seriously. I don't think, I don't know. I don't think that'll ever be my situation. I'll probably go out in the desert uh, where the long wave ranch is and fly kite supported ZEP antennas. And I'll certainly make a video of, of one of those in action if I ever do it because it's a doggone cool thing to do. There's also another ranch out there that I go to in the winter uh, that, I might, um, that I might do that at. Just uh, that's a vacation spot that I sometimes go to. Nothing like Wyoming in the winter. Don't knock it till you've tried it. Stan Gibalisco, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV.
Signing off for now, 73, and so long.